All right. So let's see. I have grandbaby's three, Miss Sally. She just turned three in December. It's funny because my wife is not the biological mother of my oldest daughter, but she's been around since uh, early times. But and what I was remember what I was realizing just the other day is that my oldest daughter is going is twenty four this year. No, she tur she turns twenty five this year. Um, she was three and a half when she met my wife. So my grandbaby is now the same age as my daughter was when she met my wife. And it's funny watching the watching them interact the same exact ways because they're, she's just as inquisitive and she's just as she's she's. Uh, uh, just as uh, cry the kid is crazy, absolutely crazy. I don't know where I don't know where it comes from. Honestly, I don't know where she gets her crazy because I still have mine. Anyway, uh, goodness gracious. So where are we? Let's see. I have uh, I have paints. I have pens and pencils. I have my book. I have my water. I have my brushes. I have my drying system. Uh, I'm here, you're here, the kids are all on that. Well, the the, the preteens have all discovered neighborhood kids, so they don't even hang around. I'm not cool enough anymore. I was all kinds of cool when they didn't have anybody to play with, but now they have people to play with. I'm not cool anymore. They're not even interested in anything I have to say. <laughs> but, anyway, say la vie, right? So, uh... Tonight, let's see. Take your headphones off. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Artistic Biker Live from Houston, America. That's right, Houston, America. It's crazy down here, guys. It, it it's like it, it seems like it's just day in day out the same exact thing over and over and over. And then you look back and you're like, wait, how did I survive that? Because that was just this happened and this happened and this happened. I, I didn't even notice it, and, and it's not any one little thing. I mean, it's not. It's like okay, Mother's Day happened. How did I survive Mother's Day? How did how did we even how did we even not notice that Mother's Day had happened? We didn't even journal. You know, we journaled about Mother's Day last week. We did that at, at the very least. We 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 journaled about Mother's Day last week, but. Uh, you know, the whole week just just breezed by, and I, I can't even I can't even tell you anything significant that happened. But this week I went to I have to be careful with this. <clears throat> I went to uh, figure drawing. Ustream has an absolutely ze absolute zero tolerance of nudity, so I have to be careful with this. I went to figure drawing, and we had two models, male and female, and. Uh, I was playing with the ink and wash, and I had some fun with it. And I've been playing with ink and wash for a few days now. Again, we have to be we have to be careful with what we show because Ustream is very, very strict on this. So anyway, um, so I've been playing with I've been playing with ink and wash and my watercolors at, at my at my figure drawing class, and then for the last for the last few days I've been playing with it here in the studio. And so I wanted to journal a little bit about that. I wanted to play a little bit about that. Also, I've been wanting to paint more. And I don't know, can you see? You can't see. Can you see the drawing rack behind me? This, it, has, it, had, it had 12 different canvases in it. They're all set over there because I needed, the, I needed them to go in a specific order. And I, I took them all out and I haven't put them all back yet. Also, I was using them as part of the ruse to cover up the Mother's Day present, which we'll talk about as we go. But... Um, I was thinking about what I wanted to do, what I wanted to do for, uh, to paint more. And I, you know, the biggest problem is what do you, what do you paint? You've got to have a subject matter to paint. And what I've decided is, is if I can't find anything to motivate me to paint, then I'm going to paint a rooster, right? And I've contacted uh, a chicken farm out here in, in Houston, uh, a couple of them actually, and they've both given me permission to come out on the, on a weekend and just start taking pictures, so I can go out there and I can take 
is so easy to turn his naughty. I go out there and take pictures of all the roosters that I want to, <laughs> and, and and then I can just paint all the big old roosters that I want to on my paintings over there. <laughs> I, I so I'm trying to keep this. I'm trying to keep this cerebral. It's hard. Wait, no, that's not what I want to say. Anyway, so I thought, well, you know what? I play with my ink and wash, and I play with a, I play with a rooster tonight because by next Saturday I hope to have painted one. So let's uh, let's let's get started on that a little bit because you know we have to break the page and everything. I'm trying so hard not to not to be naughty. Okay, so I may, maybe I'm not trying as hard as I should to not be naughty. So how how was everybody's Mother's Day? I'd like to hear I'd like to hear about what happened with everybody's Mother's Day. Um, I know there's not very many people in the chat room. We've been having some struggles with the chat, so there's been some difficulties there. But you can always comment on the YouTube video in the comment section. But I'd like to know, did you get to spend time with your with your uh, kids if you have kids? Did you get to spend time with your mother if you're if you're lucky enough to still have your mother? I did not get to spend time with my mother. I got to call her, but I did not get to see her this year. But my daughter, my oldest daughter, my grandbaby have come to stay with us for a while. I don't know how long a while will be, so I'm just going to a while will be, so I'm just going to enjoy it as much as I can. But it really made the wife's Mother's Day because she had the, the daughters and she had the grandbaby and she had one of the boys. The other boy is 26. He struggles to have time for the things he wants to do, let alone <laughs> to have time to to drive to Texas and spend with his old man. <laughs> All right. Let me dry this. I can tell you kind of what we did. I can tell you we went to uh, we uh, we didn't go anywhere. We didn't do anything fantabulous like that. But throughout the week, the kids and I, my my wife has a toy box that her father made her when she was little, and it had fallen into disrepair, and so the kids and I cleaned it up and painted it for her. And somebody's in, somebody's coming. Hi baby. Say hi to the people. Hi people. Wave at them like this. This is the grandbaby we were just talking about. <gasps> Did you bring me coffee? Mm -hmm. Is it rum in it? Mm -hmm. I love you. I'm a pirate's wife. You're a pirate's wife. Well, I'm a pirate. A pirate's wife for me. This is the grandbaby that we were just talking about, and now our hand is in the paint. Oh, yay! <laughs> well, we just wipe it off. That's okay. What's okay. Nana fix it? What is what? What's what? That. Grandpa's coffee. Grandpa's coffee. <laughs> Where'd you go? So, so, anyway, the kids and I snuck around and, and refurbished it for her. And she. She came down in the morning and it was just sitting down there waiting for her with flowers sitting on top of it. Oh. Miss Sally went to grandmother's for brunch and then they went flower shopping for the front stoop. See, that's a that's a great way to spend Mother's Day. This I'm gonna dry this just a little faster with a hairdryer. It won't take as long though because we've got the heat lamp on. And then I snuck out and I bought flowers for my daughter. And I bought cards for everybody. 
and I had the kids sign them. I think it's my daughter's first Mother's Day card signed by her baby. We might, we might luck out. She's actually talking about moving down here. We might, we might luck out and end up with her and, and one of her good friends down here with us because there's a house just around the corner from us for lease. And so that might be, that might turn out to be a very good thing. Everybody put your masks on. You want to make sure you're you want to make sure you're wearing a mask when you spray paint. Really important. Can't stress. Hang on. I can't. Hang on. I can't stress the importance of wearing a mask when you spray paint. This is the part where I get in trouble. Wait. I need Grandpa, and I said, why? She said, because he's mine. I am your Grandpa. You are you don't have a mask on. Though. I know. No, we're going back inside. We can't, we can't play out here while he's painting. <laughs> I show I show it to you when I'm finished. He'll show us again. I show it to you when I'm finished, okay? Okay? But she seriously said because he's mine. Yay! I am your grandpa. Well, I know you don't want to, but we need to. I know. It makes uh -oh. me sad too. Uh oh. I Ah, that makes my heart feel good. Makes my heart feel good. See what? Let's. Let's do this first. I do have a fan and I've got the door open. I probably should still have a mask on because I'm this close. But just so you know, I do have a fan and the door open. Now let's see if I can make this work. I don't want super definitive shapes here. I want this kind of masked. Kind of um, atmospheric perspective. So while there'll be some while there will be some highlights, I want this to be more more atmosphere atmospheric perspective than anything else. And then where's my white? What happened to my white paint? Did I not get my white paint? She came out here because she needed her grandpa. Awesome is that.
I'm just there's no real pattern here. I'm just looking for places that that don't have. I'm just look actually. I'm just looking for ways to break up that background so that it looks like a. I don't know. So it looks like a bunch of straw on the background, I guess. What I've done is I've taken this piece of paper and I folded it over, and I've stapled it into kind of a teardrop. And by spray painting in one end, it's not it's not putting a definitive shape on there. It's more it's more highlighting it. It's kind of like the other week when we when we painted and we made sure that we didn't I didn't spray the paint directly onto the page as much as I put the paint on the mask. I'm kind of doing the same thing now. Right? So there's that. And it'll dry pretty quick. Spray paint. Spray paint, you know, you're just trying to evaporate the the uh, thinner that's in the that's in the, the bottle that's in the, the can. Yeah, Miss Sally's in the chat room saying she thinks she, that uh, she and Pamela French are the only two viewers. That's probably true. I can't tell though, because the like I said, the chat's been messing up. I am going to hit this with just a little bit of white because I I want it subdued. because I haven't inhaled enough propellant today. Jeez. Okay. I'm going to try to do two steps in one. I have this absorbent ground. I may not be able to do this. Oh, I didn't, I didn't put my trackball out of the way of the spray paint. while we're while we're drying the spray paint let's go ahead and rough in our rooster I like a big brush I like a big brush for this so let's see let's let's get us a little beat going here and then let's get us a, a comb this is absorbent ground when this dries it's supposed to make whatever whatever it's painted on like watercolor paper So that way we can put water medium on this spray paint. We don't have to worry about it not staying where we put it. Right? Anyway, that's the goal. We'll see if it works. I have not tried this yet. This is, I mean, it's not a new technique. It's not even a new to us technique. It's just a new application of a technique we've done before. It's okay if the spray paint spreads into this.
Matter of fact, I'm going to leave places where the spray paint can be seen through it. it Dad? Yeah, buddy. Is it okay if Kiddo plays in the backyard? That's up to your mother, buddy. I'm doing a show. Wait, you're actually doing a show? I'm actually doing a show. With they can see you? Yep. Just joking about what? All right. <laughs> They're in the chat room talking about what's on your easel. And she says she says that uh, she she thinks she may have overdone it because she sent seven and an oops. <laughs> and Miss Sally says that's okay. Because last week he said not many were sending them. Now he has some to show. That's exactly right. So while that ground is drying, let's uh, let's do that. Let's do what's on your easel. I really should have cleaned my mouse up. All right. Let's see here. What camera are we on? Are we on me? What's on your easel? What's on your easel? What's on your easel today? All right. So let's see here. Uh, several weeks ago, several weeks ago, my very good friend Jamie Lynn, artist, poet, girl, this, shoot, this one's back from February, sent in an easel where she had done uh, some jelly printed paper. Uh, she attached a tip in pocket and, and took a spot of not so pretty jelly printed cardstock. Layered on wash. Anyway, she made these. She made these really pretty. Let's see if I can make a slideshow. Let's see if I can open it as a slideshow. Here we go. So she made these really pretty spreads. I, don't, I honestly I don't know if I showed them in, if I showed them then or not, but I mean they're really really fun with their pockets and their stampage and their bubbles and their steampunk mermaids. It's a really fun spread, and I don't know if I ever showed it. That was back from. That was back from February, February, and then Pamela French sent one in March. I mean, I'm serious. I'm behind on this. She sent in March. Uh, hang on, I forgot to read it. A couple of crazy little ATCs. Not a productive week, but something. You know, if you're doing something, you're doing more than me lately. So, here's a little uh, chameleon gecko thing. ATC. I love the tongue. Look at that tongue. And then a little birdie hatching out of an egg. Well, that's just sweet right there. Simple and sweet. And then let's see. Probably should have probably should have stuck with APG and then and then gone back to to Pamela French. Because we're going to be going back and forth here for a little bit. Uh, APG sent this one back in March. Acrylic back, back painted background on top of a mishmash of die cut negatives. Mishmash of die cut negatives. Little bird on a windowsill. I love looking at the I love looking at the paint strokes up close. I do like to see that. So let's let's see. Sticking with APG, this is from this is still from March. With a little help from my friends, I could buy a little help from my friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Try a little help. My friends, what do you see when you turn out the lights? I 
I can't tell you, but I shock know it's mine. I get by the love from my friends. All right. Uh, second journal spread, acrylic painted orange circle jelly print from Patty Tully Parish, cut and glued, right pages of flat. If you ask me what I came to do in this world, I, an artist, will answer you. Okay. If you ask me what I came to do in this world, I, an artist, will answer you. I am here to live out loud. There you go. Live out loud. There's a flap. See the flap? This is a self-portrait of Jamie Lynn with a towel on her head and a bathrobe and her heels because I'm sure that's how she looks when she gets out of the shower. That's how I dress when I get out of the shower. Very nice. Close up. Okay. And then what just came in? Something just came in. Was it another easel? It might have been. Sticking with APG. Uh, journal spread, gelato's background, happy mail, jelly printed cardstock, cut into shapes that mimic the stencil pattern, glued to flip ups. Slideshow. This soul would have no rainbow if the eyes had no tears. Aww. And she's got all these amoebas floating around her page. Brave soul. Look at the colors. I really dig that. Brave soul, this soul would have no rainbow if the eyes had no tears. And then, somebody tell me who this is, I can't... It doesn't tell me who it is, it just came across as a phone number. You know what, I know who this is. This is... Uh, uh, Patrick. This is Pauline. This is uh, this is Pauline and Patrick. This is what we should have shown last week. This is their Mother's Day spread. Turn your face toward the sun. Let the shadows fall behind you. The bird is looking away from the sun. So she's telling the bird what to do. Look at the textures. There's texture in this. You can barely see it, but there's texture in this. Nice. Very nice. And then Pamela French is sending in easels. Look at all the easels. Watercolor and a long greeting card. And then there's a picture of her granddaughter. And there's a commission card for a baptism. A greeting card done with tricolor pencils. What is currently on my easel is a knife painting. And something she wrote by request. So there's the long card, long card. Is that the knife painting? The uh, gallery doesn't usually put them in order. There's something she wrote by request. A mother's love flows as freely as the wind and is as light as the feather that holds the bird in flight. Her love binds her forever to her young and yet in those times of separation frees that child to fly and grow. 
sh and share that same love with their own. And so the story goes that a mother's love shall forever hold fast the heart that she carried and releases to the world to affect her love and love from before time and love after time that will go on forever by Pamela French. Very nice. And there's a grandbaby. Hi, grandbaby. Subliminal babies. Pamela French is sent in subliminal babies. Baptismal poster. And then what do we have here? This was a watercolor she did as a sympathy card for her, some, a friend that lost her mother. It's an interesting thing about the interest the, the the interesting thing about mothers is that the powerhouse of the cell is in the mitochondria and this is probably more than you want to know but the powerhouse of the cell is in the mitochondria and mitochondria have their very own DNA they have different DNA from the DNA in the rest of the cells of the body the DNA is an exact replica of the DNA in the mother's mitochondria and their mother's mitochondria and their mother's mitochondria my children do not have mitochondrial DNA from me their mitochondrial DNA is an exact replica of their mother's mitochondrial DNA my mitochondrial DNA is an exact replica of my mother's mitochondrial DNA mitochondrial DNA is passed from mother to offspring forever one of the things they use to measure changes in 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 human evolution or human changes over time is the that there are certain traits that that show jumps the certain things that happen events that happen in the world that cause certain traits to take over and they show bottlenecks in the in the development of the DNA and, and they can see that they can measure the the genetic shifts in the mitochondrial DNA and they can determine from that how long it's been since we were at this stage of our development or how long it's one of the ways they can tell how long it's been since we were at this stage of our development for instance they can tell that uh, a couple of thousand years ago there was a, a, a major uh, event that happened that bottlenecked our DNA and and caused us to go from a couple of million people in the world to a couple of thousand people in the world. We were almost extinct, and it was a super volcanic. They, t they, they tied it back to the same time that the super volcano in Italy erupted, or Italy, Greece area, it, the Mediterranean. There was a super volcano that erupted around the same time back there, and it was a big enough event to actually, uh, to actually bottleneck our genetic development so that they can see that we are all related to just very few mothers at that time period so we went from millions of people to maybe thousands of people and could could easily have gone extinct at the time but the most interesting thing that you should take from all of that science is when somebody says that a mother's love never dies they're not lying because that is the mother's love is the only thing that's passed the only thing that's passed from uh, generation to generation to generation all the rest of the genetics is a mixture of mother and father, mother and father, mother and father, grandparents, aunts and uncles. It's all a mixture. But the mitochondrial DNA is exact replica or as close to an exact replica as possible. So that's that mother's love that continues forever. Anyway, let me dry this just a little bit longer. I might... I might have said at some time that I have a degree in biology. Hmm. I let it kind of cool up in places. I don't know what this is. We're going to leave it though. <laughs> How are we doing on time? Oh, good Lord, it's already 7.20. I am going to take a moment here. I'm going to turn that light off because that is really hard to look at. And I'm going to drink my coffee that my beautiful young bride brought me. Hmm. 
because she loves me. Oh. And then I'm going to show you I made a practice run with this. So <laughs> we'll see how we'll see how it works out. Hi, Leanne. We'll see how we'll see how this works out. Oh, I can't make I can't figure out where my mouse is. Where's my mouse? There's my mouse. All right, so let's see here. Let's take this thing and come down here like this and do this. These things don't really have a defining shape. They're not, it's not like they're all the same. So. Somebody has decided to come in the door and make random noises. Can I help you, young man? What? Is it time for dinner? Yes. I love dinner. Want to say hi? Hello, my peeps. Hang on. That camera. Hello, my peeps. So that's all you get. That's all. Hey, you got more than I usually get. <laughs> I was kind of shocked when he when he came home from school today. He, he came in and gave me a hug before he did anything else. <laughs> we locked. We locked in here. Uh oh. You'll have to go out and go through the front door then. They can't hear you because they, that's the laundry room. Right. Well, don't break my door. Please don't break my door. I'm going to use the pen to add some shading where I want. Where I want there to be shading. Start with some colorization out here on the ends. Can't talk, Arting. Can you hear the kids next door playing basketball? My neighbor, my neighbor's son, is. I, I fully expect to hear about him playing on the Rockets Sunday. He is out there every day, rain or shine. Uh, he, he is out there every day, rain or shine, practicing, practicing shooting from every possible direction, practicing over and over and over and over. He is out there every day practicing like that. And I'm so impressed by his, by his uh, tenacity, by his drive to want to practice like that it truly is inspiring it's one of the things that made me it's one of the things that made me want to start painting again more enthusiastically uh, simply because you know you can't get better if you don't do it and his 
Ooh, I need more right here. You can't. You can't get better if you don't do it kind of thing. And his drive inspired me to want to do more. So, you know, you can get inspiration from a, from a lot of different places. But they are always out there. And it's funny because he's got a little sister. And I've, now she's taking an interest in basketball. And so the whole family will be out there playing and when the little sister's out there, you know, my kids go out there, all of the neighborhood kids, little kids, big kids, they're all out there. And they're all out there playing. And it's really nice just to see them out there. Because these guys are, these are, these are, this is a teenager. He's, he's supposed to be, you know, too busy to deal with little kids, right? Little teenagers are notorious for not having time or patience for little kids but this guy makes time and I'm, I'm, I'm really impressed with him. if you can't tell if you can't tell I, I want you to understand I am truly impressed by this guy and that kind of looks like a that kind of looks like a rooster doesn't that kind of look like a rooster let me dry that real quick I think I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and watercolor it, and then and then we'll see what we can do with my ink brush. Hey, thanks for stopping by, Pamela. Hi, Kimberly. See if the rest of that will dry as we go. I don't know if can you guys how well can you guys see the page? You guys can't probably can't see it very well at all with that on. Well, here's the here's the reason why I've thought about painting roosters this year is is it's the year of the rooster in the Chinese zodiac. That's what actually made me think about doing roosters so much. That's that is what that is the soul. That is the sole driving thing behind all this is that it's the year of the rooster. And so I thought, you know what? If I can't think of anything else to paint, I'll paint a rooster. And so I haven't done any. This is the first one I've done. But I want to do them bigger. And I'll probably do this one bigger. But if I do, I'll go get my own pictures. Right now I'm using an internet reference photo. And I don't really like to do that because, one, it's somebody else's artwork and I've not asked permission. And two, uh, it's, not, it's not an angle that I would normally do. But 
I do not follow basketball, Miss Miss Allie. My wife won't let me watch because she says that it's annoying with all the questions. It's it's she says it's difficult for her to keep up with the game and she has to stop and answer all my questions. So she won't she won't let me. It's the same with football. It's the, it's the exact same with football. She won't she won't let me watch football because she finds my questions annoying. She's actually told me to man up a few times. You know the truth of the matter is is when I was in high school when I was in junior high and high school, all I wanted to do was lift weights and wrestle and play football. And my, the high school that I went to did not have a football team. It did not have a wrestling team. It did not have a weightlifting team. It didn't have any of those sports that interested me. And I was always too short and too slow for basketball. And... Uh, baseball is one of those sports that they pick the they pick the teams in the fourth grade. If you're not on the team in the fourth grade, you're not getting on the team in high school. Uh, I like tacos. Not at the moment. At the moment, I would like to do my page and talk to my peeps. You want to say hi? You want to say hi? Hang on. Hello, people. Hang on. Duck down a sec, Cameron. Hello. Remember her? Remember when she would come out and sing for us? And I could just say, sing something for us, baby, while I do this. And she would just, I love my daddy. He's the best daddy ever. Okay. Now I say, sing for us, baby. And she's like, what do you want me to sing? I can't, I can't sing that. Yeah. Ran her off. I'm going to turn this off so you can see better. I think you can see better if I do that. I went to Nenica, Kimberly. Nenica High School. Kimberly is in the in my hometown. She lives in the town I was born in. The town I just moved from recently. Nenica might have football now. But I believe, she's asking me, she says she thought they had football. I believe that the football that they have now is teamed up with another town, Cyril, or Cement, one of the two. And I believe that it is, uh, you, have to, you, you have to be bussed over to that town. But they did not have that option when I was there. Because you're talking, uh, let's see. 86. I graduated I graduated in 89. Forever ago. So they may have it now, but they did not have it when I was there. They had nothing but baseball, basketball, and track. And I know this shocks you. I know when you look at me, you think, man, he's capable of anything, but I am not a track star. No way, no how. 
by any stretch of the imagination, am I a drag star? That's just the reality of life. And I learned that early on. Trying to run from my mother. <laughs> kind of like how this is going. I do, I do, I do. I kind of like this. How am I going to get that color? Let's see. A little bit of yellow. Touch of green. A lot of white. A lot of water. And we'll put it right around there. Like that. Maybe a little more green. I'm going to put it right, right around there like that. All right. And then we'll take this and we'll go right, right into that corner of that eye. Like that. I'll we'll take this and we'll come right up around the back edge of that eye, like that. Ooh, daddy likes. And then let's put a little, uh, I don't know, maybe a little indigo down here on the bottom side of that beak, just a, just a little bit, just to distinguish the bottom side of that beak from the top side of that beak. And you know what? I kind of like the indigo. Let's let's add some. Let's put the indigo where I thought the wash was going to work out better. I need a lot of indigo in just a few places under that beak to make shadow like that. Daddy likes. And I'm going to add some shadows going out across the feathers over there. Just a few. Just a few. And then I'm going to add shadows around here. Here and around here. Ooh. Can't talk, Harding. And then I'm going to take that indigo and I'm going to blacken that eye in just like that. Ooh. I like that. I don't think there's much. I don't think there's much left to do there. I think. I think let's take that. And let's dry that. What's going on in the chat? I don't know if you remember, but that drawing of Bughorn Rams I did was bought by a fellow employee last week. I do remember your drawing of Bughorn Rams. And she bought it for 50 bucks. That's nice. That'll buy you some art supplies. I love when that happens. I loves it. I 
Have I ever told you guys that I love my brush pen? I may, I may have neglected to mention it at times, but I want you to know that I love my brush pen. Loves it. Loves it. Loves it. Looks like a chicken to me. Does that look like a chicken to you? I can't even tell what it looks like. Let's see. Hmm. It doesn't quite pop enough from that background, though, does it? Let's try it just a little more. I am having an affair with my brush pen. I'm going to hit it with some of this. Because what I'm going to do next, I don't want the edges to run. I don't care if the middle of it's dry. I just want the edges. I want to make sure all the edges are dry. I think we're good. I think we're good. Because what I'm going to do now, I have just a little bit of shampoo and conditioner in my brush water. And what that does is it breaks up the beading it gives the water, it makes the water wetter. It makes it where my brush is clean faster and easier. Afterwards, it keeps my bristles soft because of the, the conditioner. It's a two-in-one. It's just cheap, cheap, suave, two-in-one conditioner. But mostly what it does is it keeps the water from beating on the, um, on the pages where I have uh, spray paint already so that when I come back in and do stuff like this it doesn't beat up those are some cool pants buddy Thanks. see how it's not see how it's not beating how it's just kind of spreading kind of thin that that's because of the soap in the in the dishwater or in the rinse water. If there were no soap in the di in the rinse water, it would it would just beat up on top of that. And it it doesn't always work. I mean, I, you can see places where it is beating. But I'm just going to go through here and I'm going to add a little bit of this indigo. A little bit of this green. And I'm just going to put it right around the perimeter of the of the rooster, and then let it fan out on its own. I love my girls. My girls are out here. See, it is beating up over here. Love sweet hugs. Such a sweet hug. 
She's giving me hugs. That's such a sweet hug. Thank you so much. You didn't see anything. See what? I didn't see anything. Oh. And this, when I come right around the edge of this perimeter here with this darker color, that will fan out into that water that I have spread out onto the edges. I can take that right around. You spin me right around, baby, right around, like a record, baby, right around, round, round. I go right around the edge here. And it will fan out into that into that background that I've already wet down. But I think I think this needed this to make that rooster pop off that page. And then finally get the absolute white here. Now let's put a drop there. Let's put just a little bit oops, just a little bit along there. And what else is shiny? Is there anything else on there that's shiny? I don't think there's anything else on there that's shiny. I might do that. I don't think there's anything else on the bird that's shiny though. I mean, you could do this, but I think that'd be better served being pink. Nah, I think I'm going to leave that alone. bit of that but I think otherwise I think I'm done I think I'm gonna call that I think I'm gonna call that done I think let's see if let's see how bad it runs if I try to put it at an angle where you guys can see it the way I see it Where or where can my eraser be? In their chat room, they're going, Oh, where or where can my eraser be? <laughs> Kimberly's blanket ate her eraser. <clears throat> All right, let's see. I should probably write something on here. It's not really, it's not really a journal page if you don't write something. I can't... Let's see, do I want to say something crass? Do I want to say something... <laughs> I don't know. Where's my tissue paper? I'm going to try and... You know what? Let's just dry it the old-fashioned way. Bird, 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 bird.
bird is the word. The bird, bird, bird. Maybe I'll sing that, Kimberly. Maybe that'll be the the background music for this. There's absolutely nothing major going on in my life. The majority of my life is just wash, rinse, repeat with little hugs in between. And the hugs are the awesomest. But it makes it hard to makes it hard to tell stories. When we started this seven years ago, eight years ago, you know, I was a creative living in rural Oklahoma, and it was real easy to come up with craziness because there's a lot of craziness in rural Oklahoma. But now I'm in the suburbs, and I honestly do not experience the same level of crazy. chase that fool around. I like that. Let's make that fool run back and forth. That'll give us all these harsh lines. All these harsh watermark lines that I love so much. We'll stop just short of running it off the book. I try to stop just short of running off the boat. Have you guys seen those dinosaurs where the chicken, where those, I'm sorry, those videos where the chickens eat mice and stuff? Knock down cats? I said dinosaurs because, you know, it's like never forget they're descended from dinosaurs. Drop it. Go, go, go. You can do it. Oh, you are running out of steam. Sally, are you guys are you guys following me on Facebook, or are you following the Artistic Biker on Facebook? If you are, I will post the link to the videos on the Artistic Biker Facebook page. And then you can see, because these things are, you, you have to remember, these things are descended from dinosaurs. Actually, I think my homeowners association won't let me have chickens. Texas just passed a law, though, that said that you can have chickens. So I don't know. I don't know what the rule is. I don't know which rule stands up. But I think Texas passed a law that said people can have chickens in their backyards. And I don't think the homeowners associations can 
can overrule Texas law but I don't know because the homeowners association is a contract that I agreed to which I actually did not agree to because I never signed a homeowners association The dino short story called Taste Like Chicken. Bacock! I don't feel like that has enough shading on it. I could this is the, the this is the biggest problem I have is that I could sit here. I could just sit here and mess with this and mess with this and mess with this. I just don't feel like this has enough I just don't feel like this has enough shading on it. I want that to appear brighter. And so I want to make sure that there's a shadow under that eye. Right? I want to make sure that there's a shadow over that eye. I want to make sure there's a shadow under that eye. I want to make sure that this goes under that eye. And it's so easy to sit here and overwork something. Very, very easy to sit here and overwork something. Very important to know when to stop. Sometimes I do. Sometimes. Not so much. But I think I'm going to stop there. I think... I think... Maybe that's a good place to stop. As he dips his brush back in the paint just one more time. Just one more time. One more time. Can't talk, Harding. All right, I'm done. I'm stopping. I'm stopping. Again, it is just too easy to just keep going and going and going.
new place to set my water cars so that they can dry with my sperm. And then I want to come back here. Talk Harding. Who was it was telling me even their even their kids know what can't talk Harding means? I love that that's a phrase that's cut on. Here we go. I'm done. I'm done. Seriously. No, seriously. It's 8 o'clock. I'm done. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. Let's see. I want to see what you see. <laughs> thank, thank, you so, thank you so much for joining me. You know, this is my favorite night of the week when I get to art with my besties. I look forward to it every week. Uh, be sure and tune in next week. Same artistic biker time. Same artistic biker channel and then we dance we dance until somebody in the chat room is nice enough to tell me that they see me dancing because that is how i know that the lag has caught up and we are everything i wanted to say is said and you need to subscribe to this channel you need to subscribe to this channel you need to subscribe to this channel Subscribe to the Artistic Biker now. Click the buttons. <laughs> Could have written Cat Bach Harding Bacart. 